Hey everyone, Eric Watson here, freelance writer, player of games, writer of words, recorder of videos, and tabletop role-playing aficionado. It is July 2020, and we just wrapped up our two-year, 86-session-long Tomb of Annihilation campaign. And we are going to take a much-needed break of a couple weeks. But at the end of our most recent session, which was our epilogue and recap episode, we did announce what's coming next, what we're doing next. And this video here will act as the official announcement and to uh, properly talk about what's coming next uh, we've got my good friend Chris hello you may know him as, as Kalinar or uh, as Mannix uh, or as the DM of our Storm King's or Thunder campaign <laughs> yeah so Chris is DMing our next campaign yay <laughs> I'm excited about it. Yeah, I am too. I, I enjoyed having you for a DM. <laughs> uh, so talk to us about what your plans are and what this is. Yeah, yeah. Should I should I give you my, my super cornball uh, intro spiel? I, I would I would love that. Okay. Okay, here it goes. Um You've seen them face the forces of elemental evil. You've seen them stand tall against the fury of giants. You've seen them delve into the depths of annihilation. And now some of those str same heroes will be pulled into a new plane of existence where peaceful fey are caught in between a violent war between invading armies of fiends and celestials in war for the lost plane. <laughs> Good? Coming this summer. <laughs> Coming this summer. They don't do, uh, not delayed till next summer due to pandemic. Right. I love it. Yep. That was great. That is the campaign. This um, is an entirely it, home brewed. Yes. Entirely home brewed, which means I steal from all sorts of sources, including other uh, published campaigns. Right. Because, because that we we're not on, going to use. Yeah. We, we, we play on Roll20, so obviously we, we use maps, and uh, it, uh, it helps to have a lot of uh, nice maps ready to go, and you can do that yeah. on the Roll20 Marketplace, or... Uh, Obviously, from all these published campaign books. So some of you, even though this is a homebrewed adventure, you may recognize some of these uh, maps that Chris will be using. So, Indeed. And you talked about using our, our previous characters. How is that going to work? Yes. So um, I got a weird sense of deja vu just now. I feel like we did. Did we do something like this for Storm Kings? Anyway. <laughs> I don't know. I think um, we started talking about maybe the MC, in terms of having like an MCU universe about like sharing right, these things. Yeah. yeah. But yes, this is going to be using um, previous characters that you've seen uh, our group of players uh, use before. Therefore, because a lot of these characters are already higher level than most of the uh, Tier 1, Tier 2 campaigns, this is going to be an entirely Tier 3 campaign. Um, ranging, guesstimating, between 13 and 20. That's so it's going to be tier three and pure four. high... Tier 3, yeah, is... I, is it called Tier 4? I, I, I oh, didn't yeah. realize it was a thing. We, we don't usually okay. see Tier 4, but yes. I no, think, I thought it was like thirds. I okay. think you generally think of them in, in the quarters. Okay. Yeah. Well, then, yes, Tier 3 and Tier 4 campaign. High level, yeah. High level campaign, yep. which we've never done. We've never. You know, all, all of our D&D &D experience uh, can be found on my YouTube channel, which none of that goes beyond level, what, 12, I think? Yeah, and most of them, if we get to 12, it's like the last fight, you're 12 or something. Or we yeah. or you turn 12 after the last fight. Yeah, exactly. I did that real bad on, on Tomb, especially. Everybody turned level 11 literally for the last fight. So I'm, I'm very excited about doing a, a higher level. Which means uh, we need to figure out what characters everybody's playing. Everybody has yeah. multiple multiple characters over the course of several years worth of playing campaigns and one shots too. We've got characters that have now been in multiple like kind of mini campaigns, mini one shots. I actually put up uh, for patrons, they already know this, but um, I put up a series of polls so that uh, patrons can vote on which characters they would actually like to see us play as. Now these are not like binding polls or anything, but they do, you know, provide some good insight into the, players in terms of what characters people generally would like to see. Uh, and those have been very interesting. So uh, to just kind of go over them and what you all can do who's watching this, if you're not a patron of patreon.com slash roguewatson, got to have a little uh, promo there. 
<laughs> uh, just leave a comment here on the here on the video. Yeah. This, this would be the time to kind of leave some comments. Let, and stuff. let this be the forum yeah. where, where we debate. Or use the Discord channel. You can find a you can yeah. find an invite link to the to the official dis, uh, Discord page uh, in the description below. And we we have a whole uh, text channel set up just for War for the Lost Plane, and obviously for a bunch of other topics. So uh, that's uh, and, and I'm both me and Chris are active in the Discord, so you can chat with us in there as well. Mm-hmm. So the characters. Um, so I get to play a character, which is fun. I'm excited about that. I only really have the one main character, which of course was my Storm King's Thunder character, uh, Kazan. Uh, but I really was leaning towards at this. It feels weird to make a new character for a tier three campaign, like very weird. But I don't get to play a character very often, so I'm kind of leaning towards just playing a new character. <laughs> um, and I've got some cool ideas, and I thought that it'd be fun also to uh, to actually like live stream that experience of of getting a character from you know, one to, uh, what do we say? 12 or 13 or something. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that could be fun. Um, Heather has Miri from, uh, Fandelver and Prince's, uh, human monk. Uh, we've got, actually, I just go to the patron page. It's easier. There we go. Brysis, a tiefling wild magic sorcerer from storm King's thunder, Kales, a half drought assassin rogue from tomb of annihilation. And then she has Scarlet, the human paladin from multiple one shot adventures from like four of them, I think. So those are um, all different options for the Southern Bell. The Southern Bell, yeah, for her to play as. Um, Rochelle <laughs> has uh, two primary characters from two campaigns: Corinne, a, a dragonborn, uh, draconic sorcerer from Storm King's Thunder; uh, Gillian, the Triton Bard of Whispers from Tomb of Annihilation. She does have one old one-shot character, a, a gnome rogue Zinli, that's used in the Haunt. But we tend to use one-shots whenever the herrings aren't around because they occasionally go on vacation. <laughs> so right. Not too many one-shots for them. Uh, Raymond has uh, Kethra, half elf, arcane trickster rogue uh, from Fandelver and Princes. Halfrid, halfling hunter ranger from Storm King's Thunder, and George, the tortle battle master fighter slash rogue from Tomb of Annihilation, as well as Falafel, a half elf bard, also from multiple one shot adventures. Uh, and Reese has Talos, the human wizard from Fandelver and Princes. Tim, the warforged fighter cleric from Storm King's Thunder. Theron, the dwarf druid of the moon from Tomb of Annihilation, and Gromosk, a half orc barbarian from a couple one shots so uh leave a comment below on uh what characters you would like to see the uh, what characters you would like to see again basically for this high specifically high level campaign yeah dm'd by chris um it'll be the same schedule in terms of friday nights um there will not be a crafting for this one uh since i'm not going to be crafting it instead we're going to be doing a, um, I don't even know what to call it, like a post. Oh, show. Re- uh, recap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You're like, yeah, Walking Dead does Talking Dead and, and some of those. Um, and this is partly what I ended up doing with, with parts of Crafting Annihilation also was I spent like the first half of it just talking about the previous episode and talking about, okay, do I have regrets? Do I have things that I was proud of? Do I have... Um, uh, just talk about what what the players did and how surprised I am or how satisfied I was. Like a lot of that can be very very helpful. How much fun. did they go off the rails? Yeah, yeah. Even even without having to even without prepping things and and going into spoiler territory, there's a lot you can discuss um, after an episode. So I thought it'd be really fun um, to do a post show. Probably we're still kind of working out the details, but probably it might even be just that same night. Uh, at least night for us. I know some folks are watching it early morning for them or whatever time <laughs> zones you're in. Um, if we can get the timing right, I think it would work out pretty easily where we could do it uh, after the fact. You know, maybe, I don't know how long it would be. It could be anywhere from like 15 or 20 minutes to, it probably wouldn't be a full hour, but, you know, it just kind of depends on, and I probably wouldn't last that long that night. But, <laughs> but I, think that'd be, I think it'd be fun and that'd be a chance for us to, you know, chat. And that would be live streams. So that would be a chance for fans to come on and, and then talk about yeah, uh, you know everything that just about, happened. Yeah, because yeah. as much as we love having obviously our live shows and stuff, we don't get to necessarily interact directly with the fans as much in terms of doing the back and forth. Uh, and I know for those of you that really enjoyed the epilogue and recap episode, that was fun because that was an example of one where we did get to actually interact with all of you. So that would be uh, something we're looking at doing is a post show uh, live stream, probably that same night after afterwards. Um, and then at some point, I will figure out what I... Oh, and, and the other important thing is this is going to be a shorter campaign. This is not going to be mm-hmm. a, a full-on year-plus-long campaigns like we've been running. 
and Lord knows not certainly not as long as Tomb, which was incredibly <laughs> long, almost a full two years. Uh, instead, I think Chris is shooting for a uh, one that's closer to Fandelver length. Yeah, which was um, more like sixteen or seventeen sessions. Right. Uh, so a couple months. So it won't be nearly as long as a huge thing. And this is going to be a homebrewed campaign, so you know that's going to be a lot of work anyway. So, but that should work out pretty time, uh, pretty well. We're hoping to maybe take a holiday break afterwards. But at some point while this is going on, I would like to figure out what I am doing next. And then I can start up doing crafting for whatever that is, uh, so I can actually get ahead of it and probably have a couple, you know, craftings um, before the uh, before that campaign even starts and before we even go on a break. So that's something I'm looking at doing. Um, what else is that? All the useful information that we have. I think so. That that feels like all all of it. Yeah. How much how much work have you done so far? I've got the general, uh, it's hard to tell how much um, depth I need to go into because, you know, with the campaign books, there's an awful lot of, like, history and, like, backstory that you don't end up using. Yeah. Usually, honestly. We don't, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, 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 a lot of, like, lore, like, here's what's going going on around and here's where people are going to go after they leave you and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, So it's it's hard to tell how much of that I should be working on because I'm not. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a fairly narratively focused person, so I've got, like, a core, like, you know, here are the narrative beats. Yeah. And then the players, I'm just going to let the players play around within within those narrative beats. I guess we should mention, too, that none of us are super well-versed in, like, the Forgotten Realms That's lore actually, and that, there were some questions about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, I mean, if, if you've watched really any of our campaigns, like, we, you know, we obviously read the books that we're running and try to do things from there, but... At no point do we try to necessarily weave it into this big ongoing history or or even pull the traditional things on there. I, I basically just – we kind of know surface level stuff. And even then we take a lot of the established stuff and then make it into our own. So, right. you know, if you're excited about, oh, Chris is going to handle the, the great demon war of blah, blah, blah. Like I, I wouldn't <laughs> – That's not that's not what's happening there. Yeah. yeah. And Because, I, I mean, as I was re- making this and reading about Celestials and 5e – I don't think I'm even using Celestials the way that they're lore written in 5e. Yeah. In, in 5e, they are not even, like, participants in anything. They just sort of hang out on their own. Okay. So this whole, the, even even the concept of the campaign is a little <laughs> bit outside of the lore of, of the 5e books. Yeah. So assume that, like, I'm using the, the pieces that are that are in 5e, but don't assume that the actual, like, canon of it is is applicable here. Yeah, we're, we're our, our all of our adventures exist in a bubble dimension outside of like the five E dimension. I mean, it's still our universe. Like we can you can choose exactly. how to doing it. The the only difference is that we all adventure within our the same universe, right? Um, but it's just yeah, we're not too keen on necessarily pulling things that are appropriate to the world or whatever. We just kind of you know stick to whatever the universe we've crafted and kind of go from there and. Yep. So we're making our own lore. The yeah. the Aserax in our lore. The the giant dragon war is in our lore. The right. Yeah. The stuff that's happened. Are. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Exactly. We've created our own continuity. <laughs> and then we are going to start on August fourteenth, which is going to be session zero, uh, which will be um, at that point. I guess we'll know the characters that we're playing, but we may have to. I don't know if that point we're going to... That's actually a good question. And I feel like... I don't know if it's going to be viable to actually have you guys, like, literally level up characters during Session Zero. Yeah. That may take too much time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what we might do is outside of Session Zero. it depends on how much we want to cover. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because what I'm, what I'm imagining for Session Zero is that you guys will just tell us or tell the audience Introduce what the your characters. characters are capable of yeah. at level 13. Yeah. So I don't want you to have, uh, be having okay. to make the choices of leveling. Like, okay, I'm going to take this level, this class at this level. Right. So going into session zero, more than likely the characters are, should be built. I and mean, we'll talk about what you can do with those characters at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the yeah, exactly, and and a lot of them should be already built up to like you know eleven or twelve by this time. But, yes. Oh, yeah. that's the other thing to talk about too. Is that I am I am allowing anyone a a free respec if, yeah. if, they, if they wish. <laughs> Because I know 
God, if you try to go back to the end of any of our campaigns yeah. and figure out how to import those into a new campaign, kind of a disaster. it's just, it's going to be garbage. Because at the end of Storm Kings, they had they were like all giants. Yep. At the end of Tomb, half of yeah, them have the like, like god powers. Yep. And all the stats were blown up. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they were just so gonna reverse be, engineer. Yep. There's going to be, well, what was your example, Eric? Uh, Mass there's Effect a Mass Effect 2. Two, yeah, where you get blown like, up. It's and you the have to same get rebuilt. characters. <laughs> yeah, but you're but we're we're remaking them for the start of a new story. A lot of RPG sequels have to do that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So okay. So we'll we'll hopefully have our characters kind of ready to go by then. And session zero will be about um, less about like making a new level one character and more about just firmly reiterating what all our characters can do, who they are, and, yeah. and I guess from and, your Any changes that you made from, when, yeah. from what the character was before, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's almost like coming back from a level up, basically, in terms of, like, going over yeah. all that. Yeah. Yeah. And then probably, like, you tying them into the, you know, explaining how they For tie sure. into the story and exactly. introduce us to the world and everything, yeah. Yep, that is going to be the plan, and that's going to be the schedule uh, going forward. So right now, uh, we've got about a month until that. It is, yeah, we've got about a month. Um, I'll still be putting out videos, uh, hopefully on a weekly basis in terms of video reviews, uh, you know, DMs Guild reviews and Roll20 reviews and that kind of thing, as well as the Let's Play live streams. But we'll be taking a, I think, much-deserved break of... Mm -hmm. Of streaming Almost D &D. two years, yeah, of exactly, that too. <laughs> and really haven't missed that many weeks either. Honestly, like that's pretty good. Uh, but a little bit of a break, and then we'll be starting in on August fourteenth with our next campaign adventure. And I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Indeed. All right.